following audio transmission is based on theory and is intended for entertainment purposes only. It is doomsday and its affiliates will not be held liable for anything you have done as it does. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome everybody to It's Doomsday Podcast Live. Today is December 5th, 2022. Time is 6.01 p.m. And joining me is the lovely and talented Jake Dials. How you doing, bud? Yo, can you can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you very well, actually. Wow. It's like it's on speakerphone, but it's not even registering my voice. It's on speakerphone, but it's not registering your voice. I don't know how to explain it, Jester, but I, I can't. Well, you know, fair enough. Ah, ah I heard that. <laughs> so that, was, saying, that was me yelling and taking my rage out on the day. Taking your rage out on the day? What kind of a day was it? I just walked in the door, man. If that tells you anything. Oh, no, it does. It tells me plenty. AKA, it was a long day. Hello, everyone. Yes, welcome in, everybody that's coming into the live room here. We've got Vetech, we've got Cindy, we've got Preaching and Breaching, Drywater, J. Rue, Shelby Jack, we've got Marcy, Gammy, Jelly, and obviously Jake is in here as well. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and cover some things that are happening, guys, in the news. Um, and I know Jake really wanted to get into the Elon Musk stuff. Uh, so do we want to kind of start there? <laughs> start there that's a whole episode in and of itself my friend <laughs> well i mean i'm i'm good we could just we could just go off on the elon stuff tonight if you want to i'm totally okay with that we usually do a pretty good job at like rolling with the punches and stuff so i'm good with that man yeah absolutely so for those of you guys that don't know it seems like every i don't know at this point i would say like every six hours you can almost set your watch by it that there's something new coming out in the media about what elon is doing all right. And <laughs> the big one that caught my eye recently was the whole release of the um, censorship of the contents of not the contents of Hunter Biden, Hunter Biden's laptop, but the idea that it was being suppressed on social media, um, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a big one. We want to start with that one. Um, I mean, you pretty much started with it, but you're right, dude. Um, so, like, come to find out. Um, the best way to describe it is how Jack described it is that he bought a $44 billion crime scene. And, uh, I think that's what they found out like almost immediately. And for all transparency standards, um, they're finding out that they actually did purchase a crime scene. And it's amazing that they're being so transparent about it being like, Hey, here's what we found. And you guys need to know because it's important. Well, I mean, it's. I don't think anybody's like a stranger to the idea that the uh, government utilizes social media to kind of censor what's coming out and they use it to kind of bury things down. And we saw this, we saw the censorship with Twitter. I mean, they banned Trump off of Twitter. I mean, how are you going to ban the president from a social media site? How are you going to really ban anybody from a social media site? Unless, I mean, you're just using, utilizing like common sense rules. I mean, Obviously, everybody has enough common sense to know that you can say stuff and can't say stuff and should and shouldn't say things. And, of course, get yourself banned. But um, why exactly did they ban a president from from platform again? Well, because he was speaking his mind. He was trying to shed uh, spread some truth, and they just didn't like what he had to say. Oh, you mean like everybody else in the world? Right. Huh. <laughs> huh doesn't seem very uh doesn't seem very appropriate if you ask me 
No, it 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 really doesn't. I mean, we know that there is this, and it, I mean, it's not even a conspiracy at this point because it's all coming true. We know for sure, one hundred percent, utilizing social media against us. And you need to conform to this. You need to stay in your lane. You need to be a good little boy, good little girl, and don't piss off the censors. Do not, for the love of God, go against the narrative because they will shut your ass down. Do you mean like the independent fact checkers? Oh, yeah. That's something else, too, that I found really interesting. So it was um, it was Google, I believe, and YouTube that are spending, I think it's like, 13, it's either $1.3 or $13 million. I don't have the story pulled up in front of me to hire their own fact checkers. Yeah. And yeah. for for what purpose? I don't know. And guys, these uh, if you guys are part of the thing, a lot of these news articles I've been posting over on the thing so you guys can go and read these in depth. Um, but they're there for you guys to pull up and read alongside or if you want to go back and read them later while you're having your morning coffee or something, they are available there. And they're extremely useful, so please utilize them. Yes. Uh, the, one of the whole purposes of the thing is to post stuff that's relevant to what's going on here. Um, so here it is here. I'll actually pull up the story real quick. Um, Google YouTube put $13 million into partnership with Network of Global Fact Checkers. Google and YouTube on Tuesday said that they're providing $13.2 million to a global network of fact checkers on the front lines of fight against misinformation. The centerpiece of the investment is a $12 million global fact check fund to support the International Fact Checking Network, the IFCN. I'm sure we could change that acronym into something fun, um, <laughs> which, uh, which encompasses 135 fact checking organizations from 65 countries in over 80 languages. The fund will open in early 2023. Google and YouTube said it's said this by far their single largest grant for fact checking. This is by far their single largest grant for fact checking. Um, so, <laughs> but what are they fact checking for? Is this fact checking or is this shutting down the facts? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, you said it earlier when you said um, <clears throat> correcting and looking out for signs of misinformation. And from what we can determine as of now, um, Again, I say as of right now, what we can determine is that if you're on one side of the voice, um, it's not misinfo. But if you're on the other side of the voice, it is. So the, the idea then of misinformation is information that one side doesn't agree with, that has money and wants to control a narrative, and then they do. Exactly. And I mean, to me, if you're going to put all this money, I mean, here's the thing. They've never given a shit before about what's true on the internet or what's not true on the internet. Nobody's ever cared. There's tons of misinformation on the internet about all kinds of different stuff. What? But it, what? Yeah. Not everything on the internet is true, Jake. <laughs> Wait. I know. I just turned your whole world upside down, didn't I? <laughs> all this time. All this time. I. Are you? Are you saying Bigfoot's not real, dude? No. Um, now, I know they have this location pegged online. Um, that could possibly be true. <laughs> I can't believe this. So, I, I'm shook. I'm, I'm sorry, man. I, I hate to be the one to do this to you, but I mean, it's, it's kind of like, okay, when we were younger and we were growing up and the internet came out, it was like the information superhighway. This isn't where you went to, you know, look at necessarily look at porn or or pull up goofy pictures of cats or or you know watch mind-numbing videos all day when the internet was when i discovered the internet it was a place to go to look for information on like a book report i was doing or an essay i was writing or maybe i had i had to do um a project on a political figure and i had to go pull information and, and the internet was the best way to do it right so when when this was when i started using the internet it was a tool now it's just like entertainment, I would think, in, in multiple facets. It's entertainment. Um, but so it, it just blows my mind now that we're seeing how much people are utilizing the Internet in the realm of politics. I mean, because, you know, Google has their own political tracker in there for elections and stuff, right? Like you don't even have to go to a website now to look up election results. Google has them right there in real time live as elections are happening. 
right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. to me, when they say, oh, yeah, we're going to do fact checking, it's anybody that puts out a YouTube video that's going against them. Anytime somebody puts something on a web page that goes against what Google wants, that's where the fact checking is going to come in and they're going to suppress that. And don't you think it's a little bit odd at the moment that because, you know, Google uh, works with Twitter, like you'll see Twitter feeds within Google when you look up a certain figure's name. Sure. OK, so don't you think it's a little funny how Elon's in here says, I'm going to expose the truth. Free speech is coming back. And then all of a sudden we have to put thirteen point two million dollars in tech checking. Hey, preppers, do you want 10% off survival food? Go to www.readywise.com and use code DOOM10 at checkout for 10% off all your survival food needs. Again, that's code DOOM10 at checkout at readywise.com, D-O-O-M-10 for 10% off at readywise.com. Is that if you have a monopoly of big tech, Who's overseeing big tech? And if they are being overseen, are they being paid off? Because obviously this is being allowed to happen. Because if it wasn't being allowed to happen, it would not be happening. So why is it happening? Hmm. I mean, well, you would think that the FCC and certain government agencies would be regulating this and they would be overseeing it. But I think they are overseeing it, but they're also controlling what's going on too. So big tech works in their favor. What? Yeah. You're blowing my mind tonight, dude. I, <laughs> I, hey, I'm I, just working with what you're giving me, dude. I don't know how to deal with all this truth, <laughs> man. So, so you're telling me that if I have a lot of money, I can pretty much do whatever I want to do. Yeah, it's the way of the world. But, I mean, you got you to gotta have a lot of money. Right. I mean, you got to like you got to be above like Bill Cosby and Jared money. Like you got to be up into the Clinton Biden money. No, oh, I don't want Bill Cosby money. He can keep all that. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want Cosby money either. But you, I mean, you get what I'm saying. You got to be up there, up there. Um, yeah, and, true. you know, so the other thing is, you know, being that Elon is doing this, I haven't got to go back and get into the Hunter Biden laptop stuff from Twitter yet. I have not gotten to read through all this yet. Um, I know he said something about. Wow, there's, I mean, there's so much more just coming out of, of Twitter with these feeds, but he was supposed to release a lot of files about this, and I haven't got to go back and release any, or read these yet. Have you got to read any of these? Yeah, sure have. I've been following it for, since it came out. It's really, uh, um, it's really terrible, to be honest. Um, the, uh, the interesting part, you know, let's, I, I really want to put emphasis on, us not just playing into the sensationalism of things because we know that that is a selling point for a lot of things, right? Um, but let's try to remember to keep things um, logical and rational like always, but let's also not forget about things like Wayfair and, and, uh, and other things that led up to this too because where did Wayfair go? Um, but with the, with the laptop, there... There was a video floating around for a while, and uh, <clears throat> oh yeah, I can say what I want, can't I? That's awesome. Um, yeah, this is, we're not Twitter, dude. We won't censor you. Shoot. My bad. <laughs> okay. Well, there was a video when all of this first started coming out about the laptop um, that I got a hold of, and it disappeared real quick. Um, the laptop was in the hands of the authorities, um, and there was a there was a building security camera footage. Um, shooting down to the road at a four-way uh, where one of the officers was sitting in his car and uh, somebody walks into that camera frame, uh, walks up to the car, shoots him in the head and just keeps walking like it never happened. Um, and four, four, uh, four police officers who, were, who had a handle of that laptop or were in, in some line of security detail for that laptop all coincidentally suicided themselves coincidentally yeah coincidentally it's coincidentally allegedly allegedly coincidentally yes <laughs> and nobody talks about any of that stuff so you'd have to think if you have an asset that that's that that's that that valuable that you would want to have police officers unalive themselves for for that matter at the same precinct the same district same county 
even. Um, like how valuable is it? What's on there? Well, you know, that's one side of it, but I think, you know, these, these poor guys who did uh, commit suicide, what were they threatened with to make this the lesser of two evils? Bullets. Or their families were threatened. And that when their too. families, yeah, when their families were threatened, it was like, you know, if me going away is going to keep my children and family safe, now that's just what I have to do. Yeah. Which is and... even scarier to think about for these guys to be put in that position. But yes, what the fuck, what is on the fucking laptop? Yes. Yeah, I've seen a lot of it. Um, there's a lot of Hunter smoking a crack pipe for sure. Um, and something involving M&Ms on a certain region of the body and uh, some foreign foreign prostitutes and some cocaine um, and more crack pipes, but also 10% to the big guy. Um, so the, the important part is that, let's, let's be honest, nowadays nobody cares if anybody's a meth head, nobody cares if anybody's doing coke, nobody cares about that stuff, nobody even really cares about the prostitutes. We care about the stuff that's really affecting our country. But we also know that one side is going to use all of that stuff to dig and get at the other side just because they can throw the punches because they want to. Um, but the, the important takeaway is that some people died protecting the evidence that's on that laptop. Matt Gates has a copy of everything that's on that laptop. And there's pretty clear and definitive evidence that shows that there was some collusion that involves laundering money in and out of Ukraine. No. <laughs> no yeah. way they're laundering money, dude. You're you're crazy. You mean to tell me that money is being laundered in the in the uh home home of money laundering in the entire world in Ukraine that that's happening there? Yes, it's happening. Trying to go back and find the article. There was an article I just read um, and I'm trying to go back and find it, but I can't seem to find it here about the Biden administration wanting to award another amount of money, another care package for, uh, Ukraine to help them rebuild their power grid is what I think it was here. Hmm. Well, while you're, uh, if you're trying to find that while you're doing that, um, something I wanted to bring up while we were talking about Elon is I think. Um, with all of the, the files that he was dropping and being transparent, there's one really important takeaway that I, I wanted people to focus on as much as I could, which is something that he said and tweeted out. And he said this, and he said, Twitter acting by itself to suppress free speech is not a First Amendment violation, which is true. But acting under orders from the government to suppress free speech with no judicial review is also true. And that's a very important takeaway that people need to understand. Um, a lot of people seem to get confused with when they get banned. They think it violates their First Amendment right of free speech, which is not true. A private platform has the ability to do and censor how they please. And you have to be cognizant of that while you're actively getting censored on a platform because we hit that agree button to the TNC when we start to use that app. And if we don't agree with those, then the clear answer is to don't use that app, obviously. But we continue to do so. And then we always see everyone get very mad because of the censorship and things. It takes somebody with some real integrity to say, I'm tired of the censorship, I'm leaving this app and I'm going somewhere else. And if everybody voted like that and voted with their dollar and voted with not using a platform because of these things, even if it affected you or not, then I think that would have a lot of change on the way big tech is designed because they want those interaction um, hours because that's how they get their money. No, absolutely, 100%. And I did find that article. Uh, before I just get into this, I want to give a shout out to someone in the chats. Guys, BP's birthday was Friday, and I wanted to bring this up on the Beans and Weenies show, but uh, there was no Beans and Weenies show. So BP, happy birthday, bud. That's all I wanted to say. Uh, happy birthday, dude. To get into this, uh, so the Biden admin pledges $53 million to help restore Ukraine's damaged power grid. That's what it was. Um, so basically, they're saying after multiple missile attacks, we have to send them over $53 million to help, you know, repair their critical infrastructure, which is their electrical grid, right? Um, that's what it says here in the article. But I thought we were sending money over there the whole time 
to help fix damage that was done and help to get them, you know, to help them with the war effort. And I mean, it, it seems yeah. to me like this at this point, and I mean, there's no, it's undeniable at this point. And I don't care if you're, if you're right or you're left, or if you're, it, it doesn't matter what your political affiliation is. If you can't see at this point that this is a way for them to keep funneling money in for it to go somewhere else, I'm sorry. I, that's what's happening. I mean, they're not, they're not improving anything. They're not doing anything. It's just like every couple months, let's send multi, let's send all these millions of dollars over to help them. This country wasn't broke to start with. All right. And now that this is like, you know, a NATO effort, why is nobody else sending money? Are we the only ones? Does anybody know? No. Um, uh, the UK sent a money, Germany sending the money. I believe France sent them some things. Uh, there are several other countries sending the money as well. Is it like Eric's comment, it's a money laundering scandal, as Raccoon Six would say. Yes, he would say that. Uh, no, but it's it is it is absolutely horrible. But to go back to the Musk thing, I just saw another article that popped up. Like I said, guys, these Musk articles are coming in like you would not believe. They're coming in like wildfire. Uh, so there was one I just read, and I'm trying to find up oh, here. It is okay. All right. So since Musk took over, suspensions of Twitter accounts exploiting child sex abuse material rise after Musk takeover. So this is, so think about this. So Musk took over in, you know, uh, I guess, you know, child predator accounts, people that were doing inappropriate things online. These accounts are now all getting suspended and shut down. Like it's on, it's on the rise. Okay. Right now, this article just came out a couple hours ago. And like I said, you're going to keep seeing more of this shit coming out probably in the next few weeks here, but isn't it funny how they weren't worried about the accounts that were exploiting children, but they were worried about the accounts that were spreading the truth. And posting the reality things and the people that were asking questions. If right. that doesn't tell you that there's big players involved with tech, I don't know what does. Of course, because that's that's where all the attention money is at. It's with big tech because we're, we're more interconnected now than we've ever been. But I think as of yesterday, if I remember reading, he said something about they, they shut down some like 40 or 45,000 accounts that were related to anything that having, having to do with some raunchy stuff with kids. And I was just like, I, I said, hell yeah, man, that's, that's wonderful. And it's about freaking time. See, I mean, I, I still, I'm still a little bit reserved about, um, Elon and what he's really up to, if he's really out to help us or if he's, I, I don't know. I'm still a little weary of the guy, still a little leery of him. Um, but no, so, I mean, but this like all seems legit with him pulling these accounts down they have the, like the unique uh, number of followers, um, and you know it, it says um, in September that they found over 500 active Twitter accounts that have openly shared or requested inappropriate stuff, um, and they're just ripping them down. And these yeah. accounts have like a they they're saying here the accounts had pulled in a total of 2,000 unique followers, according to the report. And here's the thing to think about, guys: is their Twitter's being Elon's being transparent about this. He's not playing games and sweeping this under the rug. He says, no, there's a problem here, and now we're fixing it, which is what we so desperately need. I don't know if this is necessarily going to be the end-all, be-all to what we're seeing online. I don't think it's going to be. But if people are like, you know, because this is what they're going to say. Oh, well, Twitter's right wing now. That's how they're going to paint this in the media, right? You're going to see, you're going to see Democrats jump and ship. You're going to see Biden get off, get off um, Twitter, along with a lot of other people will probably get off Twitter saying, oh, no, now that Elon took it over, it's right wing. We don't want to be there anymore. Get rid of your Twitter account. They'll do something. If they start putting a lot of truth out there, they'll do something to suppress it. What do you think? I think they're already trying, dude, because, I mean, I I kind of, <clears throat> what, I, what I've always said is that um, it's important to do your best to remain objective when it comes to things like this. Um, because even, I mean, I'm reading the comments here. I'm not going to call any one person out or anything like that. Don't take it that way and don't feel, you know, nobody's being attacked here or anything like that. We don't do that kind of stuff. Um, there are going to be people who are like, yay, Elon. And there are going to be people who are be like, boo, Elon. And what that says to me is that he's playing the middle of it, which in my opinion, I think is pretty smart to do. Um, because especially now as a platform owner, that shows me that he's not picking and choosing sides. He is right on the middle of things, which means that he's being objective 
And I think that that's important. I think in a lot of ways, I don't agree with a guy. But I think in a lot of other ways, I do agree with a guy. And I think both of those sides are important. And I think it's important to hear both sides of why somebody would think he's a fraud or why somebody thinks he's genuine. I think that's a super important conversation to have because whether you like him or not, you have to admit and you have to agree that some of the things that he says is absolutely true. Is that, yeah, Twitter alone censoring a platform is not an infringement of First Amendment. This is true. But when a government does it, without any consultation, without any meetings, and just doing it all willy-nilly, that is a violation of First Amendment. But that is not exclusive to just Twitter itself. These things are correct. Um, and yeah, Eric, I, I, he's, I mean, he's not God or anything like that. He's, you know, he's a super rich guy, spent $44 billion to buy a platform. Um, and even though even though he doesn't act according to my own objective view of truth doesn't mean that he's still acting in the form of truth or fiction. Just because it's not happening in the way that I prefer it or want it to happen doesn't mean that it's not happening and we have to be cognizant of that too. And you and I both know that Twitter is just an echo chamber of people shouting their opinions left and right all day long and everybody's going to have everything to say. Oh yeah, absolutely. But <laughs> that's <it's>, all it is. <laughs> it's it's still important to remember no matter what he is or no matter who he is, there are going to be people who agree with him and those points and why should be listened to and there are going to be people who disagree with him and those points should also be equally listened to. So as a platform owner running that middle that middle road between whatever side there is, if there are two sides running that middle road and listening to both of them evenly is exactly what he should be doing and exactly what we should be doing. I just, I just caught a comment here. Uh, Solid says Twitter is turning into parlor. I, you know, I never got on to parlor. I don't know much about it or what it was. And I think that was a more right wing platform. Parlor was, wasn't it? It was, but maybe parlors turning it into Twitter, but um, I don't know if some people know this or not, but Kanye bought tw bought Parler. Gotcha. Yeah, because I don't know. I don't know much about the Parler. I remember everybody talking about True Social, and I never made an account over there either. I I attempted to because everybody's like, "Oh, you got to get on there. You got to check it out." It wasn't available for Android, um, or PC. So I was like, "Well, I guess I'm just not going to get that." Um, but Jake, to get into this, here's another article that's very interesting. So. All right, this one came out on the 4th. Uh, FBI coordination with big tech censorship ahead of 2020 election revealed in agent this deposition, Missouri AG says. So basically, this is what it says. We found that the FBI plays a big role in working with the social media companies to censor speech. From weekly meetings with social media companies ahead of the 2020 election to ask for the account takedowns, said Missouri Attorney General Eric Schmidt. So this... Exactly what we're talking about with, you know, the uh, the government and higher ups being involved in these tech companies and being involved with the social media and instituting the censorship. A lot of this is coming out now. And isn't that so isn't that so weird right after the midterms, this starts coming out like a lot of this stuff does. It's almost like it's scripted. <laughs> yeah, it is. And that's that's another really important thing to take note of. For those of us who have been in this realm for a long enough period of time, we've been through we've been through our emotional moments where we started realizing that things aren't the way that we thought that they were, but they were vastly different than than that. And when we started to to wake up to that and become um, uh, aware of these things, it kind of blew our minds. So we kind of act infantile in that way. So we act out emotionally and we get angry and, and we get loud and boisterous about these things. And that's what's happening to a lot of people right now. Um, so for people to vocalize is not a terrible thing. They're vocalizing because they're just now becoming aware of these things because they're just now starting to listen. And maybe, maybe that took for them Elon doing it. Maybe it took for them Kanye West doing it. Or maybe it took something else doing it. But either way, it's being done. And the you can't 
you can't argue that the world isn't changing because it is it's changing vastly um but for those of us who have known this for a very long time another thing like this like with elon happening for me i was just like oh yeah that makes sense but i see a lot of people out there who are like what's going on my life is upside down i don't know which way to think i don't know who to trust anymore and i'm just like bet man i've been there um <laughs> it gets better and it gets a lot easier but you have to people who have been in this for a while i want to remind you guys to to go easy on these people and remind remind yourself remember that that was you at one point because that was me at one point and I wish that when I started going down those those holes and figuring out things and doing my own research and learning how to do my own research and all of this, I wish that I had somebody to guide me that was rational, level-headed, like I try to be now, to say, hey, dude, I get it. You're upset, but hear me out. <laughs> and here's why you got to chill. Things have to happen organically. There's There are tons of people out here who know what's up. And they're all willing to help you just calm down and set yourself away from that for a little bit and just, and just observe and you're going to learn much more. I promise. Hey preppers, do you want 10% off survival food? Go to www.readywise.com and use code doom10 at checkout for 10% off all your survival food needs. Again, that's code doom10 at checkout at readywise.com. D-O-O-M-10 for 10% off at readywise.com. You know, and to go to go back to this, like, you know, I don't know who to trust this up, down, left, right thing. Um, for me, it was, it was after Trump got into power, after he got elected, I would say halfway through his presidency, I started asking a lot of questions because I was like, Things seem really good right now. Things seem like they're calming down. Like everybody that was pissed off about the election results, everything else, it was all calming down. And I was like, <laughs> it's, it's too calm. Something's going to break bad. <laughs> and then, you know, and then COVID hit. And I just watched how everything went. And I watched everybody attacking everybody at the beginning of the pandemic. And it was like people were attacking Trump because he wanted to do stuff. And then they were calling it racist. And then he wanted to, they were bitching at him when he didn't do other stuff. And it was like, I was watching all this shit being thrown at the wall and I'm like, okay, it doesn't even matter at this point what side of the fence you're on or what side of the aisle you're on. It it really doesn't matter. This is just everybody's in this together. And they they were pushing for this mass separation and divide and they freaking got it. They definitely got it. And I'm looking and this hasn't came out yet. I look for this to probably come out in the next few weeks. Um, Musk is exposing the shit about, you know, Hunter Biden's laptop and, and you know, now, you know, taking down these accounts that are doing uh, horrible things with children. The next is going to be pandemic related stuff. I wouldn't doubt if that's the next thing we'd seen, like censorship due to COVID and things that they were taking down, uh, maybe truth or things that were being shared about the um, the uh, jab, you know, things like that. I look for to start happening on the Twitter with Elon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it will. Um yeah, it will. Um, kind of the kind of the way I see it going, man, is they're not going to let the pandemic stuff go because they already know that they got it, they've got their claws sunk into that, and they know that some people are greatly affected by that on an emotional level. It's it's kind of like um, anybody who who has ever been like bullied and not learned how to deal with the, dealing with uh, you know hurtful comments and things like what a bully does is that at first it really sucks and it really ruins your day and you feel like your life is being ruined. Uh, But after a while you learn how to stand on your own two feet and you realize that you're in charge of how you feel and nobody can make you feel any way that you don't want to feel. This is very much the same thing is that you have people in power and the only thing that you can give somebody in power that they want is more power. You can't give them anything else when they've already got everything else. And that's the only thing left to desire and push for otherwise they wouldn't push anymore there would be no there there would be no incentive to continue but once you realize that they say and do these things because they know through studying 
and psychology that it affects you and how it affects you. And just like a bully, they can say these things to harm you and affect you mentally and use that to control you. Once you realize that and you learn how to combat that in the proper way by standing on your own two feet, you can no longer be controlled by these things. But the same thing I've been saying for like the last two years is that like almost three years ago now, I was talking about how climate change is going to be a factor in this and it's going to be a big player in this. And it is still going to be. And the thing that we can definitely expect is climate lockdowns. Um, for people who are here who have not heard me talk about these things, they are going to institute climate lockdowns. So they will take a general area, take LA for example, they'll use that as a test group, and they did during the pandemic. If you guys were paying attention, they're telling you what they're going to do. And during the pandemic, when it first started, and they started the lockdowns, and virtually everybody in LA, which <clears throat> is a blue state, um, I don't pick or choose sides though, but we can kind of determine the behavior by this. But mostly everybody in Los Angeles, Los Angeles County, stayed home. And then they put out articles, you need to go look this up, and you need to go look at the CO2 levels dropping in Los Angeles during the pandemic. And they said, ah, we got them, just like a bully. We got to them, so we can do this. So they will institute climate lockdowns and they will make you stay home one way or another because they said so. So I remember uh, seeing news articles popping up online about how clear the LA skyline was due to everybody being home due to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So this seed has already been planted. Yes. And these things don't happen overnight, people. For you, for you new people to this, for, the, for you people who are new to these strategies, the big things that you're looking for to happen right away will never happen right away. It takes planning, it takes coordination, and it takes years, and it takes money. And if they're going to do something like institute something like a climate lockdown, They've already started that. They've already got the foundation started and they're building on it now. So go watch the news, even though they tell you not to watch mainstream. I suggest that you do and you will see the narrative push and you will see at least two, three, four times enough to stick into your head with repetition. Climate change, climate change, climate change. Notice they don't call it global warming anymore. They call it climate change. It's, it's a narrative that has already been pushed and being pushed, and they will continue to add to it. Right. And Solid's comment here, she says the air was better. Yeah, I, I, I whole, I'm not saying it, it, that that part of it was bullshit. I believe the air probably was better because not everybody was out running around and, and doing different things. But how Jake is saying, you know, it's, it's the climate change now. It's not the global warming. This also pushes in this to the sustainable energy plan, which is what we talk about all the time, Agenda 2030, and this one world order, and, and the government, the things that are going to be raining down from the government on how they're going to be controlling us. This definitely fits into this plan that they've been talking about for years. And one of the big pushes with this, one of the big ways to sell the general public on it is the idea of the world's going to shit and we have to save it. The climate's all screwed up. We have to save it. And, you know, I'm not, guys, temperatures fluctuate. We have record highs. We have record lows. This has been a thing that we've recorded through history for hundred for about 100 years or so. You can go back and look and see the ups and downs and record temperatures and, and all this stuff, right? Um, we were recording weather back in the 20s. So to think that, you know, you can't go back and see how some of these things operated with droughts and everything else, it's... The earth does different things and they're going to play, they're going to pull on your heartstrings and they're going to play this to their advantage. It's what they're absolutely going to do. This, this planet is cyclical people. It runs in cycles. Um, for example, um, a lot of the examples that I use is that if you think of Egypt, you think of desert and you think of sand. Um, but at one point in time, uh, that place was an entire jungle. Uh, same with Antarctica. Uh, you think of snow and cold and freezing temperatures all the time. Um, definitive proof proven that at one point, also a vast forest, green, lush, warm. Things change over time, and it takes a very, very long time to do. Um, but yes, I'm sure that the air was better 
for sure. I'm sure that has a lot to do with smog levels with not as many people on the roads in one massive just ball of cars on, the, on a small area. And when you smash that many people together all the time, um, yeah, you're going to have some issues. Uh, kind of the same way you put a bunch of people in a crowd at a concert and it gets really, really warm in there. Kind of the same thing happens when you shove a bunch of vehicles on the highway in one place and it gets really, really smoggy in there and eventually it dissipates. Um, but just because the air in general that's breathable and right there in our faces was better doesn't necessitate that the that it has anything to do with any climate change. And scientists actually will argue that point and they will say that many of them believe that climate change has very little, if anything, to do with, with it being man-made or influenced by man at all. Right. No, I, I agree with you. And guys, I want to, so another article I just came across and I wanted to get into this just briefly since we were mentioning the Elon stuff and, and the, uh, the laptop stuff. So according to this article, um, every employee at Twitter who was involved in suppressing the Hunter Biden laptop story will have an opportunity to come before Congress and explain their actions to the American people. Now it says we'll have an opportunity. It doesn't say going to, so let's be clear on that they will have the opportunity to, but it's, it's, I mean, it's just really funny to me how this is, how this is so deeply involved. And I I can't wait to hear what these employees have to say. If they say anything, they might mysteriously just disappear. That's very possible. They very well may. And it, it could, it could be a giant nothing burger too. Um, it's really hard to say, but I think for the most part, I don't think, uh, I don't think Elon would have been so transparent I mean, and, and already started to come out with things if he didn't find anything important. But I think he's doing the right thing of being transparent. And I think um, I think a lot of people will look at that and a lot of people will say, yeah, that's just because he wants your money. It's like, no, dude, if he wanted your money, you think he would charge more than just $8 um, for people? Um, obviously, he could and people would still use that platform. He could charge $30 a month and people would still pay for that. a month isn't a lot and it's not even covering anything as far as, you know, how long is it going to take them to make $44 billion back on $8 a month from people? Um, A very long time. Uh, But a lot of people look at it and be like, yeah, it's just because he wants your money. Um, No, I think, in my opinion, I think he wants to be transparent because he knows how important it is for uh, transparency because transparency is key, especially in a world where we have a vast lacking of transparency in virtually every asset or facet of our lives. And I think a lot of you will agree with that, is that as much as we want to know, we really don't know much of anything because we're not told nothing is shared with us. We don't even know if UFOs are real or if we just make them or if there's aliens. We don't know if ghosts are real. We don't know if Bigfoot's lurking around, smelling up the place, sitting behind a tree. We have no idea because nobody tells us anything. We just think what we think and then we shout our opinions for the most part. Emergency action message. At approximately 1 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Nora is tracking 15 ICBM nuclear missiles inbound to the following cities Orlando, Miami, Pittsburgh, Dover, Newark, Richland, Philadelphia, New York City, Baltimore, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Boston, Seattle, Detroit. This is an extremely deadly situation. Stay tuned, the next emergency message will be a presidential address.